All right, hello class. So uh, today, or in this third part of the um, lecture six, we're going to briefly introduce the concept of discrete time observers without getting too much into the weeds. Uh, so it's gonna be a relatively brief uh, lecture. Uh, so, the dynamics of the uh, of the system you're observing, of course, are, are given in discrete time here, right? And we assume from the previous lecture that we've uh, found a satisfactory controller equals k x k, and we would like to implement that uh, not using the actual full state because we don't have access to that information but instead using a estimate of the state, x hat of k. So um, how do we construct that estimate? Well, uh, the, uh, the observer design in the discrete time case is, uh, is relatively straightforward, at least in the single, single step, uh, one step observer design case. Um, we have an uh, output of the system, uh, cxk plus duk. And we know, of course, what this is. This is going to be kx hat of k. And we would like to choose a, 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 an observer gain over here uh, that yields a an observer dynamics. So this is the equivalent of the Leuenberger observer, where we've got uh, the propagation of the, of the estimate We've got uh, the effect of the input, and uh, that's, of course, okay. And we've got uh, a correction term. And the correction term is uh, what you would expect. It's the estimate of what we expect to be seeing, right? say, y hat of k. Uh, based on our current estimate of the state. And then, of course, updated using our input, which is k x hat of k. Right. And uh, we take the difference between what we expected to see and what we actually see. Right. And uh, we multiply that through this gain term here to, to correct our estimate of the state. And we've got uh, an error between what we, uh, again, again, we should probably put the other way around, between what we uh, estimate the state should be and what the actual state is. And we would like that thing to go to zero. And of course, we can't actually estimate this, but it, assuming that our gain is chosen appropriately, then uh, we should we would expect that, that those closed loop error dynamics to go to zero. And, and so we... Uh, we uh, formulate the error system, right? We find the dynamics of this. We just plug in here for the uh, error dynamics, and we get that the uh, the closed loop error dynamics, the b's all cancel out. And we get a very simple term here, which I I do, don't derive in these slides, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. Oh. So we got that. Uh, is uh, is a plus l c. And so what we see here is that the uh, the closed loop dynamics uh, for the Leuenberger observer in the discrete time case are exactly equal to those of the continuous time. Where remember we had e dot t equals a plus l c e of t. So the error dynamics go to zero if we choose L such that A plus LC is now, uh, in this case, of course, we want it to be sure, not, not, not Hurwitz. Uh, however, all of the, the, the results that we have on the previous parts A and B uh, can now be applied to this case, although, again, we haven't defined observability and detectability in the discrete time case explicitly. Uh, but uh, I guess you can you can take my word for it that, that they're more or less the same. So we uh, we want the a plus l c to 
not to be sure. And sure as in the name sure, not we're sure that they're stable or something like that. All right, so uh, that, uh, so we, we design our controller such that A plus BK is sure from the previous lecture. And now we want to choose L plus, so that A plus LC is also sure. And uh, presumably then uh, our closed loop observer based controller again, with that same structure that we got there, system observer k close the loop and we want that state and uh, the difference between those two to go to zero as t goes to infinity or actually in this case as k goes to infinity right. and uh, in this case of course uh, we have an equivalent to the uh, separation principle which we used for uh, the design of the Leuenberger observer and we can see that uh, given here uh, we find the closed loop dynamics of the state we find the closed loop dynamics of the uh, estimated state right and we just put those in uh, in sort of a block augmented state format where we plug here into here right there's the a goes down to there the bk goes down to there and uh, likewise for the estimate sta estimated state we've got a plus bk plus lc goes here and then the, we have this uh, this update term here that goes over there right so what can we say about this uh the eigenvalues of this uh of this matrix here well fortunately they are it, this this matrix has exactly the same form as continuous time right so in continuous time we had x dot and x hat dot and something 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 x and x hat right and uh, in the continuous time case, this was a, these were exactly the same matrices. Uh, so clearly, if we do our little variable trick, uh, we reobtain the substitution trick. In fact, uh, if you define these, redefine these states as x k plus one and e to the k plus one, right? So you get something zero a plus b k a plus LC and then something over here which doesn't matter in the, at least in this in this formulation so the eigenvalues then of a plus of the the closed loop observer based controller are equivalent to the are equal to the eigenvalues of a plus BK and the eigenvalues of a plus LC so you just choose if you're interested in eigenvalues which we still are at this point uh, if we want the eigenvalues of the closed loop system to be in a particular range we can apply our destability criterion. We can use uh, Acker or Place to choose them precisely where we want them to be or, uh, or some other tool like that. So the problem hasn't significantly changed from the continuous time to the discrete time case, except that we want now the eigenvalues not to be far in the left half plane, but we want them to be in the unit circle. Right. Uh, now, one concept before I leave the discrete time case entirely is that uh, these are one-step observers. These are one-step observers. And I'm not going to go over two-step observers, but I at least want you to be familiar with the concept of, of what's going on here in a two-step observer case. So the two-step, uh, the, the implementation of these discrete time observers is a little bit complicated, right? And so what are we, why are we in discrete time? Right, well, we've got a system, and systems don't naturally evolve in discrete time, right? They evolve in continuous time. And the only reason we represent them in discrete time is for implementation aspects, uh, because we can only update our controllers in discrete intervals, and we can only measure or sample the outputs at discrete times. And I, I really separated those, those statements, right, the sampling of the of the output y of k and the update of the controller u of k right 
because those do not really happen simultaneously. You have to uh, you have your observer here, and we can very quickly put the K there. And so actually uh, what, what's going on is your observer is responding to the output at, in fact, uh, y of k minus 1. And uh, the, your, your, update, your system is responding to the u at also k minus 1. Right? So if we were to do this in a two-step case, we would have a k minus 1 here. And uh, this, this would be still k, but this would be also k minus 1. Right. So that's uh, it changes the dynamics slightly, um, and it makes the life a little bit more complicated, but not too much more complicated. Although we'll link into it, there is a two-step observer structure, which allows you to get around this by constructing sort of a predicted uh, estimate of the state and doing your observation based on that. Uh, if you do that and you close, I don't have the, I'm not going to write down the, I don't have the slide for the, uh, the structure of that, but in that case, uh, the error dynamics actually become A plus LC, uh, but then there's an extra A there, right? Or E. Okay, this one. Right. Uh, fortunately, however, that's uh, almost exactly the same case as the one-step observer where we had, I guess, sorry, I'm like squishing it a little bit. Um, I'm blocking myself. Uh, e to the k plus 1 equals a plus lca e to the k. Uh, so that's almost exactly the same as the observer design case uh, without with a, in a single step observer, except now that we've replaced C with C A. Um, so the the problem in a two step observer is actually not significantly more complicated than in a one step observer. Uh, just for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to go through the dynamics of that observer here. All right, so now to conclude uh, this uh, dual set or uh, this set of two lectures, five and six, uh, we have here a summation of a bunch of LMIs uh, for both continuous time case, continuous time, and the discrete time case. Right? And this is, a, this is a, an image from uh, Duan and Yu. Uh, so uh, this is the, uh, the LMI uh, in discrete time that we've been working on these over here and uh, in continuous time, uh, these over here. Right. Uh, there are other formulations that we, we talked about, uh, we didn't talk about. Uh, so there's a null space formulation, which I think is rather complicated, so I don't like it. Uh, and there's another formulation, which uh, again, we haven't talked about, but it's, uh, it works just as well as uh, in addition. So with that, um, I'll conclude and uh, just uh, have a, here a brief illustration, numerical example, to help you get some idea, uh, tie these concepts of observability and controllability together. And so uh, let's, let's focus on this, uh, this, this case right here, uh, where we have a very simple system, single input, two outputs, and the outputs are not the same as the, uh, as the input. So the input goes into state two, and the outputs are state one and state three. So is this system observable? Well, you should be able to just look at it and tell, right? And controllable, right? So first of all, is it controllable, right? Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, B, well, our input goes into state two, as we said. State two is here. Now the question of whether it's controllable is whether state two then gets mixed with enough other states so that you can control those other states in addition to state two through that uh, controllability matrix. And we see here that, well, okay, we, don't, we already have state two. State one is directly affected by state two, and so we should be able to control it. State three is not directly affected by uh, state two, but it is effect directly affected by state one, 
which we've already argued here, we can also we, we can control through state two. And so uh, we can control state one directly. Uh, we can control state or state two directly. We can control state one indirectly through a single mixing. And we can control state three uh, indirectly again through a double mixing. All right, so this state, this system is controllable. And likewise, is the system observable? Well, we can only observe states one and states three. Uh, and so the question is, can we also observe state two? Well, let's look at the dynamics of state two. State two, well, it depends on state two, which we can't measure. But it also depends on state one, which we can measure. Uh, so through a single mixing, then the, uh, the, the state two is also observable, and we can actually observe all three states. So this one is controllable and observable. And I leave it to you to determine uh, if this, uh, this jet aircraft model from Duan and Yu uh, is similarly observable and controllable. So that brief, uh, wraps up our brief uh, introduction to discrete time observers and wraps up this two lecture series on observability and controllability. And in the next lecture, we'll start getting ready for, uh, for uh, the problems of optimal control. And so I'll see you then.